Hey guys, Max Sophie Queen here, and welcome back to the last leg, the Bernie Goodwin Memorial Zoo. Yes, it is time once again, you guys, to go to the final zoo in the career mode scenario. We're almost finished. We are almost finished with the game. So we need to honor the legacy of Bernie Goodwin and drive Mr. Myers out of business. We're going to create the Bernie Goodwin Memorial Zoo, which will sit atop a small island in the upper bay of New York. Or rather, it will once it's been built. It's do or die, sink or swim, and strive to thrive. But who will emerge? So I guess it's time to go ahead and get into it, see what it's all about, and, um, well, see if we can finally finish the last scenario here in the career mode. What do you got for me, Emma Goodwin? Well, hello there. If it isn't person whose name I just realized I didn't actually learn. I must confess, I feel betrayed. Did our time working together mean nothing to you? Do all the opportunities I gave you count for naught? Here, here. Let me turn around so you can retrieve your knife from my back. I would so hate for you to lose it. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm just joshing with you. It's only business, but I am going to have to destroy you. Ta-ta, for now. Ugh. You and I are going to put Mr. Myers out of business for good. In every sense of the word. Now, I've purchased a small island near his remaining zoo. It's not but it's an attractive enough destination that it should draw customers away from Mr. Meyer's establishment. But don't imagine for one minute that he'll make it easy for us. You'll constantly have to be on the lookout for criminal near-do-wells. And also, a laptop bag which I lost when I was surveying the site. Wait, you know what? Forget the bag. You just worry about the troublemakers. Listen. If we want to drive Mr. Myers out of the zoo business for the good of animals everywhere, then our zoo will have to be the best zoo the world's ever seen. We'll have to have the happiest animals and the happiest guests, and that means having the happiest staff as well. But we also can't ignore our conservation responsibilities in pursuit of those goals. We have to be peerless at everything. However, if I've learned anything, it's that if there's one person who can build this zoo, it's you. Or me. But I'll be much too busy. Good luck! Okay, so this is it, everyone. This is the first zoo here. Well, the only zoo here that we're going to be working with right now. So... This is the final zoo. We have the Bernie Goodwin Memorial Zoo, and we don't have much to work with in terms of space. We're kind of we're kind of limited on what we can do here, but this is a huge task, and I quickly realized how big the task was going to be by the I want to say the second time around, maybe first time. No, you know, it was only one time if I'm going to be honest. So Basically what happened was I went into the zoo. I didn't play anything. I just tried to record the whole rest of the series, completing the final zoo before I decided to do any recording on it. Just wanted to get every episode done. And then I would go back through later on and I, I just post some commentary with it or just do post commentary and stuff like that. Um, I thought I could do it live and decided to try to do it that way, but it didn't actually work out. I ended up kind of in a rough spot and not really, really learning anything in the process. So I didn't really figure out exactly how to do this. Um, so again, I decided to rely on the good old YouTube walkthroughs, <laughs> basically, um, to try to get through this scenario here. So what we're going to be doing is we are pretty much going to be... Uh, going through and doing all of, all of the rest of the final zoos as post-commentary zoos. Um, I've done pretty much all the recording 
I haven't finished the scenario just yet, but I'm working on it currently as we are as we are doing this episode here. Um, and so we're going to finish up everything and get finished with Planet Zoo as soon as I'm able to get the rest of the series recorded. So I'm going to be using a walkthrough and I'm going to try to do it like I did the last one. Um, but we're not, we're not hopefully going to be in a situation where I'll be sitting there for hours on end trying to record. Um, I'm also going to do a bit of stuff like this as well. I'm going to be skipping through some of this stuff that's kind of not necessary. It takes a little bit too long. It's kind of just a little, a little bit more stuff that you don't really need to see anyway. Instead of just skipping it all together, I thought we would go ahead and just skip through it a bit. I have the ability to do so, so I thought I would I would probably do that and it would it would make the episodes probably be not as long as the last scenario that we did in in this format where I had to sit there for like two hours at a time and then I had to speed up the whole entire video so that I was able to actually get the content to be somewhat 30 to 40 minutes like I've usually had it but basically we're going to do this for the rest of this of the of the um scenario here until we complete it and then we'll be done with planet zoo i think i think i'm gonna go ahead and take a break i'm gonna not play any more planet zoo because i currently don't have any um more scenarios to do this is the final scenario i didn't buy any more packs so we don't have any more like um uh, DLC packs or anything. I just bought the, the standard game and I wanted to try it out before I decided to buy any more packs. If you guys do want to see more packs in the future, I guess I could buy some more, but that would only be if you would want to want me to. If not, then I'm not even going to worry about it because for me, this game wasn't like I thought it was going to be. It's a cool game. It's fun. It can be time consuming and just something just to sit there and just play with when you want to, but it's also a little bit annoying to me and not like I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a Zoo Tycoon-esque type game, but it ended up being way more in-depth and more in detail, which I know a lot of people like and a lot of people were probably happy about. Me, as someone who grew up on Planet Zoo, my, or not Planet Zoo, as someone who grew up on Zoo Tycoon, um, the actual original Zoo Tycoon, the one from like, what was it, the early, early 2000s or whenever it came out, uh, the one before they went all 3D, um, Zoo Tycoon 2. I was, I was a part of the original, so I definitely, definitely, um, yeah. I, I was not used to Planet Zoo, let's just say that. I wasn't used to it at all. So, I think, uh, I think I will probably come back into it and, and play some on my own. But I am glad that we did get to finish up the scenarios. That's one thing I did wanted to do before I completed my Planet Zoo walkthroughs or whatever you want to call them, just let's plays, anything in general. I wanted to make sure that I actually completed the scenarios, like the main part of the game. Because you guys know when I play through like Pokemon games and stuff like that, I always want to complete the main portion of the game. I don't you generally focus on like the after game or things that come afterwards. I usually just like to finish the main portion of the game and that's considered a let's play for me. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's the way we're gonna do it. I've decided for the rest of the series. Um, unfortunately, I'm sorry if you don't like it, but it's I'm, uh, I'm kind of on a limited time right now, actually. And I'm trying to get all of these finished up for I'm no longer able to record anymore for the summer. Uh, although for me, it would probably be the summer for you guys. I don't know when it will be because I don't know when you're going to see this episode. <laughs> but anyway, let's get back into some Planet Zoo, I guess. And let's just talk a bit more about the scenario and about what's going on. So our main objectives we have in the bronze objective. Um, I don't know. Did I look at it or not? I don't remember. But anyway, I have it up here anyway. The bronze objective, the only thing that we have to do is we have to increase the overall habitat species welfare to 70%. And I think we have to have, oh, I don't remember, like six, six species in the zoo. I don't, two or three or something like that. I don't know. It's just the bronze here. 
not that much. And then we also had to increase the guest average happiness to 60% and I think we had to have 600 guests in the zoo and then that will completely bronze scenario. So the first thing that I wanted to do was I wanted to create our first habitat that we are going to be putting into the zoo and it, it needs to be a pretty small animal because like I said we're working with with little space so we don't have a lot of room here to work with we we need as much space as we can get for this uh, scenario here and since we're working with a little tiny space it can be a little bit difficult to try to get it to work out um, perfectly but if we use some small animals in the beginning it should help us out what we our main goal right now is going to be is pretty much just trying to get some guests coming into the zoo and the only way to do that is getting at least one or two animals going so that we can start getting some donations in um, and things like that so I think we will start out with just one exhibit first we'll do that and then we also will probably need to go ahead and put in some some shops as well I know they say that you probably shouldn't put in the shops first when you're just starting out because you want to make your money first um, from the animals before you start putting in all the shops and stuff but that's mostly whenever you do like the franchise zoos and, and things like that and like I said I did decide to use a walkthrough so I pretty much just used the walkthrough that this person did and just copied what they did um, because actually there is very few people on YouTube who have actually completed the Bernie Memorial Walk uh, Zoo so I'm actually I was actually surprised to find one that had it actually completed so I was lucky I'll try to remember once again like I did with the Nevada State Eco Zoo I'll try to remember to post the person's walkthrough that I used or their channel in the description so you guys can check it out um, but we're gonna go ahead and put in a gulpy soda place and then of course a chief beef a food stop food shop as well as well as an information center and we can also put in some a gift shop with the balloons and then of course a bathroom stall as well so that people can have pretty much everything right over here in this one area so just starting out so that we can have a have a little area for them also don't forget we also have to add in our um, donation boxes as well as our guest educations because your guest education rating can actually help a lot with your zoo especially with your star happiness of the zoo and the way people are engaged in everything so it's definitely worth it to do that we place the donation bins in also i'm going to put in an atm as well because if people run out of money then they're going to leave the zoo and you want to give them a way to have money so that they don't leave the zoo right away whenever they run out of money also um i don't know if i'd mention it or not but i think we're going to start out with our first species being the aardvark the aardvark is pretty small doesn't take too much just getting started so i feel like it should be it should be okay to start out with just a small little animal to work with in the beginning i thought that would be something that we could we could use and start out with so we're going to take our aardvarks and we're going to place them into our zoo also one thing i do want to mention is you're seeing everything like the paths and all that stuff and how they're going to look so perfect don't get used to that <laughs> because it's not going to be like that it is not going to be like that at all it's actually going to probably be a bit difficult in the beginning to get the paths and stuff working uh, because i wanted to do them a certain way but the game just wouldn't let me so in the end it's probably not going to look as as good as it looks right now but you know what i'm just going to try to make it look as decent as i possibly can so Hopefully it'll be somewhat coherent, or not coherent, but somewhat somewhat okay looking by the end. It probably won't, but it's fine. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to go ahead and put the aardvarks into their habitat. But first I think we're going to go ahead and just make, the, make it a little bit bigger. It is kind of small, so I'm going to go ahead and increase the size a bit so that we have a little bit of room for 
the uh, for, for the these things the shelters that's what it is for their shelters because I didn't realize it on episode one but eventually the shelters are gonna be a big deal for the aardvarks because they do have shyness um, and it is a big issue whenever your animals are stressed and shy from too much guest interaction it can be detrimental for them so definitely want to make sure you get those shelters in there and make sure that they have enough to places to hide especially whew, especially in the beginning so we're gonna put in a couple of shelters and then I'm gonna place in a food bowl of course and a water pipe as well and I don't think we'll have anything else we can really put in, especially as far as like enrichment is concerned. Um, we're going to probably have to do some research and stuff on that before we get started with that. Um, but it should, it should start getting guests to come into the zoo and that's really what we want in the beginning is just to get our guests coming into the zoo. Um, so we've got two aardvarks. I decided to do a male and a female because one of the main things that we're going to learn when we get towards the end of the scenario here is that we're going to need more animals in our zoo uh, because we're going to need some pretty nice looking animals. We're going to need some nice looking animals. We're going to need star rating to be a big deal by the time we get finished with this. Okay, so if you're noticing any quick cuts or anything like that, I do want to say all it's all fine you don't you don't really miss anything uh because for one thing the only thing that i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be viewing the video and pausing while i'm viewing the video then working from there so it'll kind of be like i did with the la the nevada state eco zoo like i said um so the times are going to be different weather's going to be different things are going to look different and change as i pause and and um come back into the video after watching the tutorial, but it's still still gonna be pretty much the same thing. So not missing out on anything off screen is what I'm basically saying. So the next thing we wanna do is we need to put in our next exhibit. We do have one, um, but we need to put in another one, our habitat, I should say. I've spent pretty much the, the last half of this whole series calling habitats exhibits and exhibits habitats and just getting them mixed up so much. To the point where I don't even think it even matters anymore. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put in another habitat. Since we do have our first one here, our aardvarks going in. We have people starting to come into the zoo. Um, and finally starting to... And things are finally starting to look a little bit better. Um, we finally can add in another, ex another habitat here. So I think we'll add in another one. I'll add in the crocodiles. Um, so I'm going to put up the barriers here and the pathways, of course. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it, but I did sort of kind of figure out how, the, how to work the barriers where they're not so frustrating for me. Um, the little check mark that I have on angle snap, I took that off and I didn't use it too much anymore. Like I used to use it constantly because you wanted the the barrier gate to be... If you wanted it to be super perfect and square, you had to do angle snap so that it wouldn't look all disfigured and weird. Um, but I ended up going ahead and changing that and taking off the angle snap so that I can pretty much just get a free range on the fencing and just kind of make it the way that I wanted to. I wasn't concerned about it looking perfect anymore. I mean, we're on the last scenario. Do we really care at this point? Because I don't. <laughs> All right, so we've got our second habitat here ready to go. Now we just need to put in the gate. And of course, we need to add in some water as well because the crocodiles are going to need a lot of water since they pretty much swim a lot and don't do anything else. So I'm going to add in a little area here for some water for them. And I actually learned quite a bit about the, uh, the water stuff as well. I do prefer to do it on my own, I will say. At least when I do it on my own, I, they can actually use it. That's that's one thing. 
The Nevada State Eco Zoo will forever haunt me as being one of the worst zoos that I've ever done because it already had water, I couldn't use my own water, and it didn't work in the end, and they, they couldn't even use the water anyway, and I couldn't even figure out how to make it work. So, honestly, I'm happy just doing it on my own. So we've got in our um, water here. I also started research on the aardvarks because we're going to need to research pretty much all the animals in the zoo eventually. Uh, but for now, we're just going to work on the aardvarks since they're first. And we also need to get them some more enrichment items as well. Uh, so I'm going to take the crocodile and I'm going to put the crocodile in the quarantine and get ready to place it into the zoo next. Unfortunately, we are running out of money. We did have to take out a loan at the beginning. If you guys saw, we did take out a loan. Um, but yeah, we are losing money, but don't worry about that. We should be fine. We'll eventually get some more money and we'll be, we'll be a-okay. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> at the point that I'm looking at right now at the zoo, I think we'll be totally fine with money. Okay, so... Next thing I want to do is, of course, put in some more education items. Um, I put in the donation boxes, but I totally forgot about putting in the education items. You guys know I learned this since the um, Nevada Zoo. You definitely want education items in your zoo. It will help a bunch. So we've got our saltwater crocodile heel here into the exhibit, and now we need to put in... Pretty much everything that it needs. I also went ahead and didn't really bother too much with plants and um, trees and stuff this time around because it really isn't worth it in all honesty. If they don't need it, I didn't worry about it unless there is a plant diversity in one of the scenario objectives which on this one there isn't thankfully. And I didn't, I didn't worry too much on it because if they don't need it it's totally fine. The only reason that you should need it is if your animal actually does need plant coverage in their exhibit or habitat, sorry. If they actually do need it, then you can use it. And um, also it's for like coverage if they are shy and they need somewhere to hide, it can help as well. But since none of these animals really needed that right now, I didn't worry about it. Especially when we're first starting out, we don't have a lot of money. We want to spend it on the basics. So just the most important things that we need in the zoo starting out. All right, so we've got our donation boxes going around. We also have some education boards and stuff that we're going to need to put in. Oh, and I almost forgot we need to do the recycling bins as well. Conservation efforts um, are very small. There's very small things that you can do for conservation. But one of the big things is instead of placing trash bins, place recycle bins. Those will help out with conservation a lot, um, especially in the beginning of the game. So we have got our, basically our two exhibits here working out great. I've got a lot of people over in this one area visiting all of the shops and I went ahead and put in a couple of benches as well. Um, even though, like I said, I haven't really ever seen anyone use the benches. Don't know why they would ever need to be used. And now we'll put in some education boards over here on the saltwater crocodile as well. Um, and then I think I'll need to put in some speakers. Yeah, I'll need to put in some speakers too on each habitat um, <clears throat> for each animal to increase the education. I really should think about in the future, if I ever do this on my own or just want to play around in a zoo, I probably should just look at where the guests are standing viewing the animals and probably place the donation boxes and the uh, education stuff over by where they're standing because I think it would make more sense. I haven't really seen too many people walking up to the education boards and actually using them. Um, so I don't know if it helps to put it over where they're viewing the animals or not. I did it sometimes, but most of the time I didn't really pay much attention to it. Because I just thought the more boards, education boards that you had, the better it would be. So I'm not really too sure if it helps out a lot more than just having one or two. If having more of them even helps a lot. But I did it anyway. Anything to try to raise up the conservation rating a bit, I think, helps. 
I do want to also mention as well, I am playing this scenario in easy mode. Um, I'm doing all of them that way. I think since the beginning of the game, I've started out playing them just normally, but then once we got into the more difficult scenarios, I decided let's play in easy mode. So mine look a, might look a little bit different from yours as far as like the goals and objectives are for each stars, uh, star rating or whatever for each objective because mine is going to be on easy mode. If you play on medium or hard, you might have some different objectives than I do. Um, but I just wanted to point that out because I did decide to do that. I decided to change it up a bit and play on easy mode. I also have changed the aging of my animals as well. You guys might have seen when I did the Nevada State Eco Zoo, I believe I showed you guys that there's a setting you can go to in your game. Um, where you can change the uh, you can change the way that the animals age and you can make it so that they age slower and they won't die as often. Um, I did that for this scenario as well. I might turn it off once we get later on into like the silver or the gold star. Uh, but for now, I think I'm going to keep it the way that it is uh, because I want to have as many animals living in my zoo by the time that I'm finished versus passed away um, from old age. And having them age slower will definitely help with that. So I did switch it over to aging, I think, five times slower. I just went all the way, just like I did with the Nevada Zoo, and I just did five times slower. Also, I want to end up adding more saltwater crocodiles into this habitat here. So I'm going to increase the size, as you guys saw. I'm going to make the make it a little bit bigger for them because they were kind of struggling a bit with space. And since I'm going to eventually have a lot more uh, in as they as I get more saltwater crocodiles and as they end up um, having children and stuff like that, I. I want to increase the size a bit, so went ahead and made the habitat a little bit bigger for them. Well, one for now. We're going to get another one eventually. I'm going to search for another one. Uh, but I went ahead and made it a little bit bigger. Figured more space would be would be better. And we're going to take everything and kind of move it around a bit. So as you can see, plenty of space now, plenty of water area, so we are good. And there's the second one. Uh, so we have a male and a female, and looks like space is, and space and water is all good now. So we are good. Now we just need to uh, fix, correct, not correct, yes, correct. Fix up the terrain here and correct it up a bit. And now we are good to go. All we have to do is get some enrichment, which we don't have yet for the saltwater crocodiles, unfortunately. I'm still working on the aardvarks for enrichment. And maybe whenever we get their enrichment up, there will be some items that we can use for the crocodile as well. So that's what I'm kind of hoping for by doing the doing it this way. Also, I'm going to go ahead and place the education boards over here for the aardvark. Um, I forgot and did not place those. So I'm going to have to do that. And then I'm going to move the other ones for the crocodile over here. Back where they need to go. I decided to move them a, li a little bit whenever we increase the size of the habitat there. Things are subject to change, basically, all right? They're subject to change. They look like this now, but they're subject to change because as the zoo increases in size, things are gonna change a bit. Okay, so as you can see, we have got a lot of guests queuing up for these different buildings here. So I think I'm going to take all the buildings and kind of scoot them back a little bit so that they can get kind of in a queue line not too much just scoot them back just a little bit maybe it'll help out with the crowding issue and i'm also going to put in some more drink areas and some more food stalls over around the crocodile exhibit as well so it can kind of people can kind of get out of this one area here and kind of go to a different area of the zoo and then i'm going to add a little path so that it's a lot easier for them to go from one side to the other Again, crowding issues. So we have to make sure that we don't have any crowding issues. <clears throat> and just give them another pathway to get over there to the other side. That's going to obviously help out with some cash as well. 
help us get in some more cash flow into the zoo. And one thing with this zoo, as you guys saw in the beginning, we didn't mention it, but Dominic Myers, he's rearing his head here. So he might be playing a few tricks on us trying to make sure we don't complete this scenario and making some, making us, making us have to struggle a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and put in some security lights, um, or no, security cameras on the poles here. And then I added a few security guards as well to have them just guarding the areas to make sure no vandalism occurs. Because we know, if we know Dominic Myers, we know he likes to vandalize a lot of stuff. Okay, so we've got some enrichment items for the aardvark now, finally. So I'm going to go ahead and place some of those into there. And then check as well and see if there's any I can put in for the crocodile exhibit, of course. Um, but we're trying to just, for now, do everything for the aardvark. And also, since we are running a little bit low on cash, we'll have to eventually help out with that too. Uh, but I need to put in a water treatment as well because we do, I did learn about that. I should have probably done that in the beginning, but if you have animals that are in the water, you want to have a water treatment facility because it will keep the water from getting dirty because the dirtier the water is, the animals aren't going to be happy and not going to have good welfare. I also learned if you want, if you have like a zoo that gets snow occasionally and they have water, you want a water temperature regulator. Um, but I don't think we'll necessarily, necessarily need it for this, this scenario. So I'm just going to put in a water treatment for now. I'm also going to add in an information center over there on the other side too. We've got some more enrichment items for the aardvark and it looks like we are good 100% for them. So they're good and they're good to go and I think I will continue to work on their enrichment but I'm also going to start some mechanic research on the barriers because eventually we're going to want to get the barriers to be as like as good as we can so that we can use the two-way glass which will help us um, so what I'm going to do is to give myself a little bit more cash I'm going to get rid of all this construction stuff and that is not needed and take all that out of here and then that'll give us a little bit more money so i think we are going to go ahead and finish off the first episode here um, i'm just going to clean up a little bit and then i'm also going to work on enrichment and stuff for the saltwater crocodile as well as finish finishing it up for the aardvark too uh, but for now i will go ahead and end it off here. I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode of the scenario and eventually we're gonna get somewhere and we're gonna get through this but it's gonna take a while. Let's just say it's gonna take a while. Uh, but that's gonna be it for me guys. I hope you enjoyed and I will of course see you guys in the next episode.